Since 2007, Team Fortress 2 has graced our gaming consoles. In 2008, it joined the ranks of PC Master Race, and fast forward to 2011, it became widely available as a free-to-play title on Steam. Using microtransactions to supplement the lost revenue was a pretty intelligent move, as Valve stated that within 9 months, their revenue had increased by a factor of 12. Now, if that were all there was to Team Fortress 2, we wouldn't be talking about it in 2016, and clearly that's not the case. Ask a PC gamer and they'll have at the very least heard of it. There are nine classes, all distinct in personality, each bringing to the table a different style of play that, when performed in concert, create an experience that is uniquely fast-paced, exciting, and generally fun. That is to say, was a unique experience. Introducing Overwatch. Overwatch, for those of you that are unaware, is like TF2 in that it is a team-centric first-person shooter that revolves around a critical objective or set of objectives. The primary differences being the class archetype, the subclass characters, the emphasis on individual team counters in lieu of individual character customization, and depending on your preference, most notably, a competitive matchmaking system. As of writing this particular sentence, competitive Overwatch has been in the wild for a little over a week, and it, for all the enjoyment that the game has brought, its myriad of fans worldwide, received an acknowledgeable amount of criticism, primarily stemming from this sense of sameness or lack of identity when compared to its standard quick play matchmaking. Enter Stage Left Valve, who, about 12 hours or so ago, finally released competitive matchmaking of their own for TF2 within the public eye. This certainly appears to be Valve trying to cash in on another team-based shooter success, especially so when you consider that Team Fortress 2 has been out for over 9 years without a true competitive matchmaking system. So the question I think we're all wondering is, why now? Many would answer that with Overwatch's release, Team Fortress 2 is dwindling using competitive matchmaking to regain some ground before its inevitable demise. However, this isn't entirely the case. TF2 has a pretty stable, concurrent user base that has actually grown since Overwatch's late May release. Moving from 49,804 average concurrent users to 51,525 average concurrent users. Now, this may sound like a drop in the bucket, and that's because honestly, it is. You see, for years now, TF2 has had an observable trend of growth that corresponds to large game updates followed by an observable period of shrinkage in which the more casual players, after experiencing the new features, move on to other games. Make no mistake, we are currently in the lowest trough of concurrent playership that TF2 has ever seen, which would definitely spell trouble for another game, however, this isn't another game. TF2 still boasts over 1.5 million monthly users at its lowest point, and despite Overwatch's overwhelming and understandable popularity, that doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. So now we must ask ourselves, why wait until after Overwatch's competitive matchmaking went live to announce TF2's, and the truth of the matter is, they didn't. TF2 competitive matchmaking was data mined in April of 2015 and officially announced for beta testing in January of 2016. Whether this was in response to Overwatch's 2014 BlizzCon announcements is entirely open to individual speculation. But despite the lack of an official competitive matchmaking system, TF2 possesses a thriving competitive community and has for years. They've played by a certain set of formal rules and guidelines, and thankfully, Valve is making those game types official within this patch as well. I don't personally think the answer is as simple as, is TF2 being killed by Overwatch? It's observably not endangered by Overwatch during what should be Overwatch's peak playership. And despite what some would think, the existence of another team-based shooter doesn't actually spell doom for Team Fortress 2. The question instead should be, is Overwatch going to develop a comparable community to TF2? It goes without saying that the only reason any game retains popularity is due to the community surrounding it, and no game exemplifies this more than Team Fortress 2. Valve has time and again proven that it can build atmospheric worlds or create a tense and highly competitive multiplayer 
it should come as no surprise that they can also create an extremely rich and lighthearted personality that fans would come to love. Team Fortress 2 isn't successful solely because it's a competitive game, its success is measured by more than data points, it's because the community has risen around it is accessible and engaging and most importantly, devoted. So is Overwatch going to topple TF2? In my honest opinion, only if the community that surrounds it is equally as loyal and accessible, but that is just an opinion. Speaking of opinions, I'd love to hear yours. Let me know in the comments whether you think Overwatch is going to finally topple TF2 or not. Before I close, I'd like to note the irony in this situation, as Blizzard has suffered the same as Valve any time a major MMO is released. But anyway, if you enjoyed this episode of Damn, I'd really appreciate you liking, subscribing, or sharing this video with your friends or family if they're into this sort of thing. This is a new series I'm making and any support goes a long way. I'd like to thank you for watching the inaugural episode of Damn. I hope you have an excellent day, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.